Hey everybody, how you doing? Coach here. After a little two week break in the action to recharge and get through the holidays, man, I'm, I'm coming to you from uh, the panhandle of Florida today. And already, already there's signs of spring here. Pollens in pine trees and, and all other kinds of things driving coach crazy right now. This week's podcast is all about keeping you guys and everyone concerned safe when it comes to your DIY landscape project. You know, over many, many years of green industry service, I have seen many, many blunders when it has come to safety and liability. In some instances, not gonna lie, I've seen people get hurt, and in others, it was a near miss with nothing more than a Band-Aid. But it all could have been very preventable. Lessons to be learned, so your project goes smooth as possible, and nobody, nobody ends up in the ER, or a courtroom, or worse. Hey, Happy New Year, all. Glad you're with me here. Glad to be back. Let's get this thing started, shall we? Hey, I'm Matt. You can call me Coach. Every Friday, I bring with me landscape DIY education, concepts and theories, ideas and solutions, so you guys can go out and tackle a landscape project yourself, get professional results, save a whole lot of money in the process, and in this day and age, be a lot more self-reliant. Man, after a 20 plus year career in the green industry, I'm bringing with me a lot of knowledge and experience that I wanna share with you guys, the new, modern, educated, self-reliant homeowner of today. You know, tackling a DIY landscape project is a formidable task. It really is. And kudos if you're actually considering it. You know, this podcast, my YouTube channel, it has gone into this type of discussion here many, many times on many fronts and on many occasions. But I have yet to discuss the safety and the liability aspect that goes along with these DIY endeavors. And this will not matter whether you're re-landscaping the front or backyard or you're redoing the kitchen or putting on an addition for that new baby coming or whatever. The sheer physical exertion the sheer physical exertion calls for one to be in reasonably good shape so safety doesn't become a concern as far as your physical abilities. You know, and I discussed that in an episode or two ago about landscape shape versus gym shape. Check that out if you get a chance. But the safety aspect and the liability aspect go well beyond the exertion and toil. What I'm speaking to is you and all of those who come in contact with this project, all people that come in the project. This means your family, your subcontractors, your neighbors, the mailman, the Amazon delivery person, et cetera, et cetera, the grandma walking her dog. This is very important for front yard landscape makeovers, especially where the possibility of public contact may be greater than the backyard projects, but still, whether it be front or back, contact is still contact. So let's discuss specifics when it comes to landscape safety and liability. Safety calls for kind of a, uh, kind of a broad brush application here, a broad brush approach. When I was contracting, it was an immediate thing I did every morning. And when I departed in the afternoon, to survey the site for potential hazards, not only for myself, but also for any people who were coming on site that day, and especially my clients, my clients' pets, my clients' kids, if there were some. Whether it was something I did, or uh, a day laborer, or one of my subs, all tools at the end of a day and throughout the day were picked up and placed in a way so that people weren't tripping. People weren't getting hit. When it came to power tools, power tools were always rendered inoperable or locked away, especially at the end of the day. And this was my job, amongst a lot of other ones, this was my job to monitor throughout the day as well. If you wanna use some examples, here's a couple. Have you ever stepped on a steel tine rake when it was left upside down? Ever hit a shallow gas line with a trencher? Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll, wake a, that'll wake a person up in a hurry, especially if there was a spark. Ever accidentally cut a cable line? 
<laughs> I share that in my book. That was a that was an interesting one. Thanks, Comcast, you lying bastards. Ever use a front tine rototiller on a compact hard soil in flip flops? I've seen it done, and I saw the results. I always insisted that my clients, especially those who had young children and pets, refrain from walking the site if it was really torn up during like demolition or irrigation and drainage when trenches were wide open or when planting was being completed and I had lots and lots of holes, sometimes big holes. I, I just asked them, hey, watch from the window. And if you wanna come out at the end of the day and look around, allow me to escort you so that nothing ever happens. And most people, most people were very appreciative of that. Another safety aspect is demolition itself. I have seen people try to take out backyards, take trees down with hatchets, I have seen them try to take it down. I've seen people try to prune trees with electric meat cutters. I have seen a lot of things. You know, the right tools for the job are paramount to mitigating job site accidents. Knowing how to use a tool, whether it be hand or power tool, is just good common sense. You know, maybe a little practice beforehand can go miles go miles and miles of long ways when it comes to actual application on the project launch day or during demolition or whenever it is. You go and uh, rent yourself a rototiller, you go and rent yourself a, a trencher. Don't be the ego dude. Don't be the ego gal. Say, oh, I can figure it out. I'm good. I I'm good to go. No, if you've never used it, have them show you. They're taking on liability if they don't and you end up getting hurt or hurt someone, okay? DIYers especially, you guys need to listen to this. You really need higher levels of safety awareness because this is not your vocation on a daily basis. You're taking something on and you're helping somebody do it. Knowing your physical limits and the capability limits of your tools without ego involvement is a great, great threshold. And the nice thing about it it is a line in the sand that you can move as you get more proficient with things, more proficient with an ax, more proficient with a chainsaw, more proficient with a pick, okay? So we're going to learn by crawling first, then we're gonna walk, and then we're gonna run. That old saying kind of comes to mind a little bit. I have r witnessed pretty nasty accidents to the bone and beyond type of accidents from just improper use of hand tools. Tools like an ax that was swung at the wrong angle and hit the wrong thing and went right into somebody's shin. Hand saws, I'm guilty of this one because I thought that, hey, the guys are, guys are doing what they're supposed to do. I'll drag, I'll drag my cuttings out to the trailer and throw them in. And, but there was one big one there that, you know, hey, I need to chop this down. So I took out my little pruning saw and I started to go at it. Nope. I didn't have I didn't have gloves on and that saw went right through that little branch and right into the back of my hand and I opened it up like a filleted salmon. Yep, I had to run to the store. So I had to get major league bandaging and everything and I came back about 30 minutes later. Yep, I looked like a, a club hand for about the next 2 weeks. Yep. So I I'm not immune to it. I really not. Another thing is is uh safety wise, you ever try to manage a full heavy wheelbarrow, if you haven't done it very much, heavy wheelbarrow full of uh, sand, dirt, concrete. Man, let me tell you, you wanna talk about something that can throw back out in a heartbeat or spill and you try to capture it as it's going, man, you can really, you can really, really mess up not only you, but part of your project itself, spilling a whole wheelbarrow full of Ah, oh, geez, seen it happen so many times. Improper positions on roofs when they were pruning trees or on fences resulting in falls and uh, saw a really bad forearm break when someone fell pruning a tree and they ended up snapping their radius and their ulna. That looked really good. They got up screaming and the arm was at a totally different angle. Now, let's open up the realm of power tools like chainsaws, rototillers, nail guns, and the like. People can be really injured really bad. You know, on the YouTube channel this week, you check out some of the DIY 
tree pruning and tree removal stuff, you, you kind of wonder, and I'm, I'm only using them as an example. You know, sometimes people just don't know what they don't know and they don't think the risk is there. But you check it out on the, on the channel this week and you look at some of that. It's, it's horrifying to watch and you can only imagine on some of them what happened when they hit the ground. The more aware you are of the risk, the more attention you will probably pay when using such tools. So how do we do it? How do we eliminate the safety and the liability risks of a DIY landscape project? You do not eliminate it. You only reduce and minimize as much as you possibly can. Human error is always going to play into it, but all you can do is monitor and mitigate as best as you can. You communicate your instructions clearly to subcontractors that come on, family and friends that are going to help you. You know, literally, you become educated first in what you are going to be taking on and convey all that you have learned to all of those who are going to be involved. It may sound cheesy, you know, when you, when you go to a friend and you, and you say, hey, John, man, I appreciate your time so much here. Listen, a couple of things. I know you're a, a cubicle type of guy and you, you don't do this stuff very much. And I really, really look forward to working with you here. But I want you to be safe. And I want you, you know, those, uh, those open-toed sandals that you came here this morning, man, I just, I would feel terrible. I feel terrible if something happened. Do you, do you have any other shoes or can you run home really quick and get a pair of boots on? You know, that's... I have seen uh, day laborers for me when I was contracting, you know, they'd show up in uh, sandals and they'd say, I don't have any boots. I said, but I told the company before they sent the ad, they always asked me what safety equipment does the employee need? And I'd always say boots, gloves, long pants, and occasionally even a hard hat. And they sent them out in open-toed sandals. I said, I'm so sorry, I can't, I can't use you today. And they would go, oh, but I need the money. I'm sorry, I can't use you. Yep, those are the kind of things that keep a, a business owner awake at night. It really is. Instead, I would complete certain areas in a work day. Uh, say, for instance, here's a, here's a good example. Today is irrigation day or irrigation and drainage day. And I know where the starting point is. I know where things had to start from and go to. And I knew that I wasn't going to get it done all in one day. So the night before, I would always plan for trench covers. I would always make sure I had tape. And I would always make sure that where I started, I would get it started and I would bury out towards the end of that particular segment of the landscape project. That way, most of it was bar tested and buried before the end of the day. The rest of it? always received a cover, a solid cover of some kind. And then the whole area would get taped off with caution tape. And then I would take pictures. This is what insurance companies, especially in the state of California, were mandating. They wanted you to go that extra yard. They don't want a liability coverage. And my coverage was the standard one and $2 million accident and liability coverage. You know, the, the standard stuff. I didn't go gonzo with it. And I never had a claim as far as an injury. I did have a claim when someone broke into a, a client's garage that I was working and stole a bunch of tools. That pissed me off. But, you know, this is where planning and scheduling plays a huge role. And I've talked to you guys about that, not necessarily ad nauseum, but uh, certainly I have covered a lot of things about planning and scheduling. You know, you don't want to have too many people on site and you don't want to have too many things going on at the same time. You know, if you've got irrigation and drainage going and then the concrete guy shows up in the afternoon and says, hey, I'm here, I, I'm available and I can start, I can start forming, you know, you got people working over, you got open trenches, you got boards and nails and, and screws going in and that you start setting a stage where someone's going to have a problem unless one area is totally separate from the other on those particular days. You know, really knowing the task and planning for it, not only tools wise, but people wise, et cetera, uh, can really, really lower that accident threshold. It will allow you to start and complete without leaving things in a hazardous state for others to wander into. Imagine this, You're, you've moved into the new house back in October. You have made plans and you have listened to me talk about designing and how to get things underway in this spring that front yard has got to go. 
and you you already have it. You've set aside your dollars and everything. Well, can you imagine being out there and you're uh, you're taking that big overgrown maple tree out or that pine tree or whatever it might be, and you decide to do it yourself. You're pretty confident with a chainsaw. You got ladders. You you got some uh, rigging equipment so that you're not going to fall, and you you're going to go at it. But you don't tape off the street area, or you don't have anybody coordinating traffic control, or you got irrigation day going out there, and you could only get a trencher for the afternoon because they were all taken in the morning. Happens all the time. And you go down there and you start doing your trenching and you're, you're going and going and going and all of a sudden it's almost dark. Store closes in 30 minutes. You gotta get that trencher back or you're gonna get hit for another half day rental. So you're done, trenches are wide open. Granny Smith down around the block walks her dog every night and it gets dark and she doesn't pay attention and she falls in that trench that goes along your sidewalk and she gets hurt. Now what? That's, that's the nightmare. That's the nightmare right there. That's where liability from an accident, that, that's where you end up in court. That's where you need lawyers and other stuff. So what could you do? Well, you, you tape off the freaking sidewalk is what you do. You tape off as much as you possibly can. You throw everything you own. I don't care if it's PVC pipe. I don't care if it's a, a freaking car you block that open trench off so nobody is going to walk there and get hurt. Ounce of prevention, pound of cure. Sound familiar? Here, here's uh, something else that you can think about is try and remember places where you've seen large construction projects going on. On TV when it's in downtown New York or wherever, or it's a, a big apartment complex that's being built. And you can remember how they put up all these cyclone fences, oftentimes with total visual screens on it. They have a security gate where if you're not part of the, the staff and the construction crews, you just don't get in, period. So the public can't just go wandering in, you know, and have a four by eight sheet of OSB fall on your head when they're roofing one of the three story apartment complexes. That's making sure, not only that, but then they have safety officers, you know, and OSHA inspections and all kinds of things going on. I'm not trying to go to that level for a DIY landscape project, but you really have to. Can you imagine if you have a large, large dollar figure claim against your homeowner's policy? You imagine what that's going to be like? Anyway, this is now all this stuff. This is now your job as well. Plus all the other hats, you know, the other hats. You were the designer, you're the scheduler, you're, you're all these things. And truly, truly, it's not that hard. You just have to pay attention. You, you can't lose focus on it when you're, when you're doing it. And that, that liability thing, you don't want to have to think about, is the yard safe? Will somebody wander in and get hurt? That is not what you want. A little bit of little bit of caution and a little bit of precaution is going to keep you safe and everyone else around. The liability issues really arises when the public of one kind or another is exposed to your site. Homeowners policies should spell out what liabilities are covered and what your responsibility as the policy owner is when others are on your property. Review yours. Talk to your agent and say, hey, I, I got this project and I'm just trying to cover all my bases, making sure I'm safe. What kind of things do I have to know? What kind of things do I have to pay attention to if I'm redoing my landscape out front? They'll tell you, they'll probably send you a whole checklist of things that you probably need to pay attention to. You know, here's another uh, angle too, is when hiring somebody, when you're hiring a subcontractor to do maybe part of the project, it is imperative, imperative, paramount, you get to see that they are insured for both liability and workers' compensation. Whoever it is, whatever company it is, they send their guys out to help you form up for concrete or a plumber who's pulling a gas line or a shed builder who's putting together a, a man cave for you back in the corner. If Joe Schmo gets hurt and his company is not insured, you know, or you hire Joe Schmo and he's bridging the gap between career one and career two, and he's, he's a handyman, he can very easily hire some mouthpiece lawyer and come after you. Not only come after you, 
personally, but then your homeowner's insurance, your house itself, blah, 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 blah. And say, for instance, he, he falls in a trench and snaps his femur or fractures his back and, co and can no longer work. <laughs> you imagine how many dollars that is for the rest of his life? This is even if you personally don't think you did anything wrong. An insurance investigation will uh, crawl right up inside your briefs and find out exactly what the site looked like and what you did, what you prepared for, what you said, blah. And Joe's medical bills can run into tens or hundreds of thousands or dollars. And that's just the medical bills. Who in the Sam hell needs that grief, right? Who in the Sam hell needs to start a landscape project and have that be the end result instead of a family barbecue on the new sod lawn? So pay attention, all of you pay attention. Nobody is immune to this. So can you prevent everything from happening? No, certainly not. But armed with that little bit of education, a lot of common sense and a boatload of vigilance, you know something? 95% or more of all projects will come off injury free, worry minimized and all involved happy with the end results. I am not here to scare you. I'm just here to kind of verbally tap your cheeks on both sides and say, hey, make sure, make sure you know. Lastly, safety also applies, get this, something that I kind of touched on at the top of the show. Safety also applies to what you wear. Landscaping projects are not a place for shorts. They're not a place for flip-flops, dangly bling around fingers and necks, and a tank top. No, 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 no. Everybody working needs proper attire head to toe, no matter what the temperature is, no matter. You see people who are professionals working outside in 100 degrees. Most of the time, they don't have wife beater t-shirts on and nothing more than a, uh, a ball cap. Most of them who do this for a living are out there in boots, heavy pants, long sleeve shirt, maybe lightweight and breathable, but it's a long sleeve shirt and a wide brim hat. Then they're also outfitted with gloves. And nowadays they're outfitted in, in brightly colored vests if they have any contact with a public roadway. So a good work shirt, boots steel toed preferably, that wide brim hat for sun protection. If you're kind of out of shape a little bit or you have a back problem or whatever, a good back brace is always used. I used one for a long time. Sunscreen, here's another one. Regular doses of H2O. Water yourself like a freaking horse. Water, even on cold days. Proper body mechanics, which I went into a little bit in that, that other podcast and other video. And more importantly, that'll really save your bacon. Learn to work as a team and keep a very strong positive attitude. Don't get pissed off and start yanking and jerking things and lifting heavy stuff when it's the end of the day and your body's ripping tired. Nope, that's not the stuff to go ripping into big heavy stuff. That's the time where you, you get help, you get extra tools, you get extra hands, all right? So remember that old adage that I mentioned, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's so true, so true in this arena, you know? So in wrapping this up, let's do a brief summary, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna educate yourself on what your policy covers. Educate yourself on workplace safety, you know? You may be a minion wherever you work, but I guarantee you the bosses and the people charged with safety, that's their job. They're always watching that stuff. If you have some new tools, power or hand tools, practice a little bit. You know, if you've never swung a pickmatic, get out there and practice in a part of the yard that you're not gonna do any damage. Monitor when you do start, monitor where tools are, where people are in relation to those tools. Always monitor where falling stuff is going to go and make sure that that area is clear for limbs and tree trunks. Prevent, 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 prevent. Know your limits, both physical and mental. Everything you do in the DIY project, you kind of have to think from a position of safety and liability, always, when completing your project. Now, a lot of people can do it all themselves and they're really, really skilled, but I'm, I'm speaking to the, the masses who want to save thousands and thousands of dollars and have a nice project at the end. But I don't want anybody, anybody to be hurt, injured, 
or worse. Specific times for heightened awareness and liability mitigation in your landscape project are these areas. Really high awareness. Demolition day. Demolition. Power tool use during any part of the project. Trenching. Trenching. <laughs> Make sure the trenches are clean. They're not too deep. I mean, nowadays your code calls for three feet deep for gas lines unless it's covered by concrete. So open holes and trenches. Utility lines. Know where the utility lines above and below ground are. That's why we always do an 811 call. Check the description below for a link. And find out where everything is. Proper clothes. I mentioned that already. Know your mental and physical limits. And above all, take your time. Don't go balls out if you're not capable of going balls out. Make sure that you plan and schedule your tools around it and you're using those tools, whether they be heavy or light, at the peak of your day, usually the beginning. That way, you're not slinging a trencher around. And if you've never used a walk behind trencher, let me tell you, it's like, sometimes it's like uh, walking a baby elephant. Let me just say that. It will tell you where it's gonna go sometimes. Same thing with rototillers. All right, hey. This is not the way I want to start off the new year as far as scaring somebody, but going into something with your eyes wide open is 10 times better than going in wide shut. That doesn't do anybody any good. That is it for me today. Guys, welcome to 2022. I look forward to bringing you a lot more educational stuff this year. I really do. As always, to your landscape success, please go over to the website and check out youryardcoach.com. Hey, help support us. There's a couple of great, great products there. And we'll be over on the Wisdom app probably next weekend, but we'll let you know. And we'll be covering this topic and many others throughout 2022. You guys, take care. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Yard Coach Podcast. Don't forget to head over to the website at youryardcoach.com where you will find more DIY landscape education, including the free 15-step DIY landscape checklist, Coach Matt's ebook called Landscaping Simplified, and the flagship digital course, Homescape 1.0. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can email Coach Matt directly at youryardcoach at gmail.com. We'll see you right here next week.